Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be answering uh, one of these common questions that I seem to get and that's asking how do you plan climbs and descents? So uh, what I did today is I went ahead and set ourselves up in a pretty solid little scenario where we can actually explore some of this concept. So let's go ahead and uh, pop up this handy dandy little approach plate that I got. Uh, currently right now I'm sitting here at Albany VOR and I'm on my way to A Cove Waypoint. Uh, that's about a uh, distance for us in the simulator is about 20 nautical miles. Now right now I'm not sitting here at 17,000 feet and I need to get down to 10 in thousand feet in order to be going along this particular approach properly. So that means we need to lose 7,000 feet. So let me go pop over to the simulator again real quick and we'll take a look at what this actually looks like. So I'm gonna go park my head down here and uh, I can see a couple key pieces of information. First of all, that I'm 20 nautical miles away from my next waypoint. The next thing I notice is how uh, you can take a look here, my ground speed is 295. And it also know that I've got four minutes to get to that waypoint. Now, with this information, we can actually work quickly and calculate exactly what my vertical speed will need to be. So since it takes four minutes to get to a cove and I need to lose 7,000 feet, all we have to do is get out a handy dandy calculator, take a 7,000 feet, divided by four minutes gives us 1,750 feet per minute descent. So I'm gonna go up to here to vertical speed mode. I'm gonna press down, 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 down. And I'm gonna set it for 1,700 feet per minute. Next thing, and you absolutely have to do this, is you wanna make sure you reduce your power. Cause again, you wanna keep your speed about the same during the entire descent. Now this is where usually I recommend people use the flight level change, but that requires a lot of skill on the part of the user. So what we need to do now is keep our vertical speed in so that we get about 295 knots ground speed. However, we're gonna take ourselves all the way down to that altitude. Now notice this is flashing at me because I never actually specified that I wanted to be at a new bottom altitude of 10,000 feet, which means for us when we get down to that altitude, we're actually going to have to go ahead and press the altitude button so that it locks us at 10,000 feet. So if we've done everything perfectly, we should be crossing 10,000 feet at exactly the A Cove VOR, I should say the A Cove uh, waypoint. So we'll go ahead and kind of take a look. Again, I'm manipulating the throttle gently to keep my ground speed, not my airspeed. Remember, airspeed is a function of air density and true airspeed. So if you try to keep the speed the same the entire descent, you'll find as you descend, your ground speed will decrease. So one of the challenges you're gonna face with trying to properly descend is making sure that you do it with exactly enough ground speed. A lot of times what people will do is because of the way descents are usually stepped, you basically reset your ground speed for each bit of the step that you need to descend. Another thing worth noting, and this is really, really important, if we're under 10,000 feet, we're not supposed to be doing more than 250 indicated. That doesn't mean my ground speed won't be more than 250. It just means we can't exceed 250 over here. And an aircraft like a TBM 930 does have that capability. So I'm just going to continue descending here. I've got about two and a half minutes to go, and I have about half that distance that I wanted to come down. My ground speed's staying pretty consistent, which means if our calculations are correct and the wind doesn't mess you up, we we should be able to get down to that 10,000 feet as we cross the A Cove uh, waypoint. You can see we have about 11.7 nautical miles to go. We have about half of our distance to go. We've actually done a really good job so far, and I haven't had to do anything fancy. Now again, um, this is very easy to do when you have an aircraft that tells you how far you need to go in order to get to your next destination. But not all aircraft are gonna have that capability, so we need other ways to solve this problem. The first method, and you'll often hear this with airliners, is you simply take your current altitude and then you subtract it from your desired altitude, and then you're simply going to divide a uh, multiply by three, and that will give you what distance you need to start descending at. For example, if we were at 20,000 feet and we needed to drop to 10,000 feet, that would be a 10,000 feet difference times three, which would mean we need to start descending at about 30 nautical miles away. Now, what people never tell you about that is they never tell you what your vertical vertical speed is supposed to be when you descend like that. That's actually really easy to calculate as well. Simply take your speed and you're simply going to divide by two and add a zero. So if I'm doing a 200 knots, I would need to be descending at 1000 feet per minute. Keep in mind that's going to be ground speed or true air speed and not indicated speed like I was warning you. Usually that gives you what they call about a three degree descent. Keep in mind if you're going significantly faster, your descent rate needs to be increased as well because you're going to be covering more distance along the way. Okay, 
So we have 11,300 feet to go. I noticed my ground speed has come down significantly because again, the air started getting a little bit thicker. Now, if I don't make an adjustment now, what's going to happen is we're going to end up getting there late. So like I said, you have to monitor the descent the entire time. Now, people who are really good at calculus can actually do the integration and tell you exactly what speed you need to maintain all the way down. But again, this is all rule of thumb kind of work here. Okay, we're about crossing A Cove and we're 500 feet to go. Let's see how well we did. Crossing A Cove in just a moment. All right, we are going to be slightly early. Keep in mind though that our ground speed was slightly higher, which resulted in us getting a little bit early. I'm gonna get to that number right there. Boop. I'm gonna go ahead and increase back up to cruise power. Keep in mind we have a speed limit here of 250 knots on indicated. Whoa, too much torque. All right, beautiful. So that's the first method we can go ahead and plan a descent. Again, that is the flat out simplest method. You could see we were within like 100 feet of where we need to be, when we need to be there without adjusting our speed. Now, what if we have a distance consideration that we need to do? Well, that starts to get a little bit tricky. So if you take a look here, if I'm a Talco, I need to be down to 8,000 feet. Let me go ahead and pause the simulation for just a second here. <laughs> I love this little icon. So basically we need to get down to 8,000 feet that's 2,000 feet in nine nautical miles. That means we need to lose 4,500 feet per, I'm sorry, the other way around, 4.5 nautical miles to lose 1,000 feet. Now you're sitting there going, uh, exactly. Now the reason that's starting to get complicated is you're starting to mix your distances with your altitudes. But when you do that, you're basically going to have to figure out exactly how fast you're going to know what rate of speed you're going to need to descend. We know we have to come down and we know we have to lose 2,000 feet in nine nautical miles. So all we need to know is how long it's going to take us to travel nine nautical miles. Now, a minute ago, I pointed out the fact, you can just look up here, it's going to take two minutes to travel that distance. But what if we didn't have that calculation and we had to actually work it out by hand? Well, then it gets a little bit complicated. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to pull yourself out a handy dandy calculator. On that calculator, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna go ahead and divide the distance by the speed. So if I'm doing, I need a total of nine divided by my speed here is going to be, I'm taking a look, it's ground speed, 284. That's gonna be 0 0.3. That's gonna be in minutes times 60. That means it's going to take 1.9 minutes to cover that distance. That's great. That simply means that all we have to do now is take the distance we need to cover, in this case, let's say 2,000 feet, divided by the time, and then we know our descent rate, 2,000 divided by nine. And that's going to get us, whoop, uh, 1.9, sorry, a descent rate of 1,052 feet per minute, which is actually not bad at all. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to set my altitude first this time so I don't have to deal with that consequence that I had last time. Click on vertical speed. I'm going to go ahead and dial this down to 1,000 feet per minute. But remember, you have to reduce your throttle. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Go ahead and release it. And now we just wait patiently. As long as we can keep our ground speed the same, it does not matter. We'll come down to our altitude on the desired moment. Keep in mind my earlier technique of showing you how to do that was just as effective. But again, this is just another method that you can use. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and proceed down to our next little altitude. We'll go ahead and consult real quickly with our handy dandy little sheet here. Let's go ahead and pop over to this one real quick. You can see we're crossing Talco. That's gonna be our next destination. And we need to get down to 8,000 feet by weeks, but we're already gonna be down to 8,000 feet way before we get to that point. So I'm not worried about that too, too much. All right, let's see how well we did here. Uh, we've lost our first thousand feet in about half the distance so you can see that our calculation was actually pretty darn good and we're just going to go ahead and lose our next thousand feet in the next five nautical miles yeah that's a pretty significant amount of descent right here but again in a pressurized airplane you're not going to care nearly as much one thing i notice is i'm half the distance and i'm half the altitude so again my calculation even though it was a calculator calculation was perfectly accurate in this particular case again it's going to be drastically simpler to use your avionics to go ahead and determine what you need to do in that regard rather than sitting there having to bang it out each time again you want to divide your distance by your speed times 60 will give you how many minutes you need to go ahead in order to cover that distance so we're just going to go let our descent kind of continue here again we want to be crossing this point at talco like i said at about 8,000 feet it's really weeks we need to be at 8,000 feet but we're just going to proceed on our regular descent here just because it's simple enough 
All right, we're crossing at 300 feet to go. And let's see how we do. Go ahead and increase my power in just a second. We're getting the altitude flash, and we're crossing Talco. We're about 100 feet high, but that's also a function of your automatic pilot, so kind of keep that in mind. So we've already gone ahead and done uh, two successful descents here. Uh, basically crossed it with 150 feet, basically the limit of the uh, actual autopilot itself, hitting our spots perfectly. It doesn't matter if you're doing this in an airliner. It doesn't matter if you're doing it in a little turboprop like I have here. You're going to be successful every time. Now, again, if you're looking for that rule of thumb, remember three degrees, you're just going to divide your speed by two and add a zero essentially so if we wanted 1300 feet per minute that's going to get us a three percent descent so uh, what we want to do now is our next one is going to take us from a wheat to flossy that's going to be uh, an 8,000 feet to 6,000 feet so that's going to be 2,000 feet per minute drop there's also Helen along the way which is uh, going to be another waypoint so what we'll do is we'll descend from wheat to Helen and we're going to try it just using the half method and see how successful it is for us so I'm going to go ahead and dial in my new altitude that I want to go to. Again, this is using just the rule of thumb. So it's going to be 6,000 feet. And what we're going to do is we're going to call up a 1,300 feet per minute. Actually, sorry, it's going to be a 1,200 feet per minute descent. I'm getting that by taking my speed over here and dividing by two and adding a zero. This, by the way, is a spectacular way to uh, plan descents into different areas, like you're trying to do a landing or something like that. All right, get ourselves up to wheat real quick. Okay, let's try it out and see what happens. Don't forget to reduce your throttle. Again, we're using just the rule of thumb here. Actually, yep. Whoops, too much. 1,200. 24 divided by 2 should be 12. <laughs> All right. Keep your indicated airspeed as fixed as you can during this descent. So if this calculation with the 3% back of the envelope sort of thing is accurate, we should be hitting Helon at exactly 6,000 feet as we cross it. So again, I'm keeping my speeds constant. I'm not doing any fancy maths here. I'm just sticking to just what I, again, that rule of thumb, just to see how quick and how quick, how accurate it is as well. Enjoy my little green mountains here. We got the Hudson River over there on our left. We're proceeding into Newark, by the way, in case you're curious. Right, it looks like we're going to be early. Uh, taking a quick look at my little screen here, I notice immediately the fact that I'm going to be crossing 6,000 feet. Looking over at my actual device over here, my uh, G3000, you can see we are significantly early. Now, the big reason for that is uh, when they created that rule of thumb, they were thinking more things like airliners or tiny airplanes. We're kind of in that sweet spot in between everything, so we're not going to be that accurate. But that being said, for a rule of thumb, you can see if we continued that rate of descent, we basically would have arrived only almost perfectly as far as uh, where we needed to be when we needed to actually get there. Go ahead and uh, give myself a little bit more power now that I've hit my destination. Again, getting early is usually not a problem unless you're operating in the Himalayas, in which case you're probably going to become one with a nearby mountain. So now normally this process is going to continue. It applies uh, both vertically as well as horizontally. If I'm climbing, basically you're going to climb as aggressively as you can. You know, you're not as worried about crossing your fingers and hitting the right spot at the right time. But you can see that even by using the device by two and add a zero technique, I still got pretty darn close to my destination at the time I needed to get to it, even though I didn't even pay attention to things like my distances. So now I'm at Helon. Uh, we're supposed to be losing going down between Flossie and... Uh, to get down to Flossie, I should say, we need to get down to 4,000 feet. So we'll just go ahead and apply the exact same philosophy. 4,300, 4,000 feet. Once we cross Helen, we're just going to start making our way back down again. Again, we're doing 240, so that's 1,200 feet per minute descent rate. So I'm going to come over here and pop the vertical speed button, go down, 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 until it says 12. Don't forget to back your throttle up so that this stays to be a constant number. Again, if you're really, really clever, you'll do this with a flight level change, and you just back the throttle back about 30%. That should be plenty. All right, we're going to proceed to down to Flossie. Again, we want to be crossing Flossie at about, like I said, about 4,000 feet. At the same time as we don't want to get there early, we don't want to get there late. 
Okay, I'm going to continue this descent and I'll take us all the way down into our actual approach for landing. And I will take a look at what that looks like when you're in these precise, super small distances. All right, we are sitting here on final approach. Uh, we're a little high as far as altitude goes, but we're descending pretty darn fast here. Uh, one thing you want to see here is that the basic philosophy is going to maintain itself basically the same here. Uh, total distance from the airport. And if I quickly uh, flip on my PFD settings here, I'm going to flip that off. You can see I'm about 7.7 .7 nautical miles away from my destination. You can actually see it pretty clearly on the map here. And the other thing I notice is uh, my descent rate is about 1,700 feet per minute at about 200 knots. But if you take a look really closely, you'll notice the fact that I'm significantly below glide slope here. So the reason uh, we're having a kind of a little fun time with that is that, if, like I said, we're a little too high. So we're basically kind of having a map make up all this different altitude as we're on our way down. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to push the nose of the aircraft down very aggressively here, catch on to our glide slope, which is right there and i'll flip the automatic pilot back on sorry autopilot i didn't mean to be so rude to you today and i'm just going to go ahead and show you what this kind of looks like during our little final approach here i'm going to continue slowing down you can see the runway looking pretty good right out in front of us lose a little bit more speed yay for reverse <laughs> never reverse an aircraft in the air please all right, there we go, just to prove my point. All right, so right now we're just a slightly below glide slope. Uh, my airspeed is about 90 knots, and you can see about half of my airspeed is about what my vertical speed needs to be in order to safely put this thing down on the ground. As a matter of fact, you can see I'm doing about 90 knots or so. That'd be about 450 feet per minute. You can see we're hovering right around the 500 feet per minute mark here. Now, if I slow this aircraft down a little bit more, which I'm not going to do, you could do that if you had to, you would notice that as I slow the plane down, my vertical speed would progressively increase in order to keep the aircraft safely on glide slope. Again, the approach speed in the TBM 930 here is right around 85 knots. Again, half of 85. Oh, you can see right here that our vertical speed's increased. So the vertical descent, and this is especially true if you're doing any sort of work with a RNAV approach, or you're doing a really tricky approach, like uh, one of the old school localizer approaches where you don't get glide slope information, this rule is still completely valid. And you can see very clearly mathematically that we did a pretty decent job even though it's a rule of thumb that we're working off of. All right, let's go ahead and double check to make sure everything's looking good here. Uh, I can see my landing gear is down. I can see my flaps are in the correct position. Everything's looking good. Inertial separator should be flipped on. Yaw damper should be shut off. Uh, yep, always shut off yaw damper for landing. Last thing you want to do is go to war with the yaw damper when you land this thing. So hopefully this video has been helpful as far as explaining how that goes and uh, dealing with, you know, some of the typical little descent problems. Like I said, it really doesn't matter if you're working with an airline or a general aviation. At the end of the day, both of those aircraft are going to have kind of the same set of rules as far as uh, going ahead and making sure that you're descending at the correct speed. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for too is uh, air traffic control. It's not unusual for air traffic control to give you really, really specific instructions as far as how you need to descend with the airplane. And that's actually going to interfere with your ability to get these perfectly planned approaches to actually work here. Uh, ooh, we've got ourselves a warning. Yep, that makes sense. Initial separator just flipped on. You want to make sure you use an initial separator during landings just in case you suck something into the engine that you don't think it belongs. Ah, Route 95, backed up as ever. Uh, just in case you suck something in there that you uh, don't want. All right, about 85 knots. Again, this is a typical little ILS approach, and I'm just doing this to demonstrate just how close and how accurate the actual calculations can be. And again, when you're an ILS approach, it really doesn't matter because you've got yourself a really, really solid reference. Uh, I wonder if Molly Pitch is, uh, oh, Molly Pitch is open 24 hours a day, so I'm not worried about it too much. All right, this is always kind of fun uh, doing family trips down this way. All right, got my hand in the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and uh, snap off the automatic pilot now. We'll go ahead and do the rest of this part on our own. I'm going to reduce power. Again, I prefer to land on the big old numbers rather than the touchdown point when you have an aircraft like this. All right, nose up. And we're down delightful. All right, hopefully this video was helpful. Again, I'm just trying to show you the uh, basics of this. You can get into a lot more sophistication without planning vertical traveling, but the key thing is there's just a couple of rules of thumbs at work, and if you need to, you can always pull out a calculator. Enjoy.